folks, I want to welcome you to today's or tonight's cooking show. You know, <laughs> I love doing cooking shows. I really do. Uh, if you go way back years and years ago, I did some great cooking shows, great recipes. No, I didn't list the recipe. My mom and her friends always hit me on that. Where's the recipe? I just watch the video, take some notes. And that's gonna be one of them nights. Because I was like, what are we gonna cook tonight? The old lady didn't wanna chime in and help out. I said, no problem. I was just trying to be courteous. I was just trying to accommodate you and your taste and everything. Because I'm a nice guy like that. Now she'll never do the same for me. She don't give a shit about my taste. However, the other day she did stop by Bredo's Bakery and brought me two pieces of bread. So maybe maybe there's hope after five years. I don't know. But this is one of those things I said, you know, what am I going to cook tonight? I looked in the ref and all we had was some weak ass eggplant. Looked like limp noodles in there. You know, like you're shooting pool with a rope. I threw that shit out. I said, look. Let's get some proper ingredients. I sent her to the store. And I looked in the in the ref and I've got these tortillas that I bought a while back. I said, oh, could be sort of fajita night. Put an order in for some ground pork from SNR, but they're out of ground pork. I said, change it up to ground beef. Now look, I love ground beef, obviously, right? I'm an American. But my old lady does not. She's not a fan of beef. You know, in Southeast Asia, we don't eat a lot of beef over here because it's expensive and it's just not their flavor. So I tried to accommodate you, baby. I put the order in for ground pork. They called me up. They said, hey, voila, which is very rare when you order from SNR. Uh, Robinson's, if I order from Robinson's on the Grab Mart, oh shit, half the items aren't there. I've talked about it many times. SNR, most of the items are there. They're ready to go. But today, for whatever reason, maybe it's because it's Friday, everybody's making a run. I don't know. Making a run on the ground port. But they said, uh, you know, voila. And they said the fish sauce that I ordered, it was bingo as well, but they had a different brand. So really, the only thing out of my order that sort of got sidetracked was the ground port now I got ground beef coming. First first uh, grab rider, first motorbike rider, he canceled my order. It was not too much stuff to put on a, on a motorbike, but you know what's funny is it shows you what the name of his motorbike is, like, you know, so you're looking for it. Guess what it is, a Scooby-Doo Mio. Now I added a Scooby-Doo, but it's a Mio. It's a little smaller motorbike, whatever. You don't think he can get that on there. Nothing big, it was just several items, uh, whatever. But again, the good thing about Grab is when those assholes cancel your order, they'll send you a message and say, Hurt, say, sir, the, uh, the Grab rider cancel your order, just hit reorder. And it's like click, click, reorder, they're, they don't even stop. I guess they're just, they're used to dealing with these idiots that can't get it on the Scooby-Doo Mio. And then the next dude, they'll just, they'll just, Keep packing and tell you to recycle until somebody can take it. So S and R and Daiu, two thumbs up. Uh, grab one thumbs up, one thumbs down. It's like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're gonna get. Um, so what am I gonna cook tonight? I'm not real sure. I've been hitting a little bit of Captain and Captain Coke. Oh, Lord. I about fell down there. Listening to my Nashville video. Me and my old man were hanging out in Tootsie's Lounge. There you go, right there. Nashville, Tennessee. Listening to that band. What a great time. Shout out to you, Pops. I miss you, man. Wish we were at Tootsie's right now listening to the band. Drinking them, uh, what was it, $13 Jack and Cokes. 16 I think it was 13 bucks, anyhow. So folks, that's where we're at right now. Uh, shout out to Gordon Ramsey, man. Thanks for tuning in to my cooking show. 
Uh, I certainly appreciate it, man. Appreciate all all your patronage stopping by and watching my show. So the first thing I'm going to do is just chop up some onions. And I'm not going to bore you all with all the vegetable chopping. But uh, my weapon of choice today is a fake Gerber strong arm. Uh, great knife. I bought my old man one. He's got the genuine version, but this is a, a Chinese knockoff that I ordered here from Lazada in the Philippines. Still a great knife. Ergonomically, a wonderful knife, but obviously the steel uh, is not up to par on the one that's made in America. But that's my weapon of choice. Hey, sweetie girl. I love you, sweetie. I love you. Uh, oh, Papa can do it, sweetie. Papa cut up the onions. You just go watch your movie, okay? And Papa's gonna make you some delicious supper, okay? Dad, you know that? <laughs> Folks, my sweetie girl, she's a diva. She's in there watching, uh, watching some movie. I don't know exactly what she's watching. Now, I don't know if I got the right angle on the dangle, where you can see. The, the action here on chopping up these onions. Oh, I think that's my grab riders here. Hold on, let me give a shout out to Fad Fadima. Uh, Report to the grab driver, baby. That old girl's been laying around today like a like a damn 90 year old woman. Sometimes she, she's so damn lazy. I mean, she's just like a damn old car. You, on a cold day, you can't get her started. I got to trade her in for a updated model. Take her back to the village. Tell her mom I got to I got to do a trade in. This one's got too many miles on her. So anyhow, fake Gerber strong arm. Chopping on my uh, homemade chopping block. If you haven't seen that video, we bought that on the far side of Subic Bay over over on the. I call it the far side, the dark side, whatever. North side of Subic Bay. Go watch that video and you can watch the gentleman make this by hand from scratch with hand tools. No power tools, no nothing like that. You know what? And I think it's time maybe we, we go over there and uh, check on everybody over there, you know? You know, hand gins fired back up. Now, I ain't over there, so I don't know, but you know, U.S. company got the contract. I'm going to see if all my predictions from years ago are coming true. I think they are. Not to get this cooking show too deep into politics, but China's going to take Taiwan one way or the other. And there ain't shit that we Americans can do about it. And uh, I'm not willing to go to war over Taiwan. But I think what's going to happen is China is going to take Taiwan and the US Navy is moving back into Hanjin. He's moving into Hanjin, moving back into Subic. Yeah, baby, he's almost there. He, he's riding around looking. He, you know how they are, baby. They can't read a map. Just give them, give the man a little bit more time. Anyhow, China's going to take Taiwan. No big deal. Send uh, the U.S. Navy back to Subic Bay just to, as a blocking move, keep them in check. And that's the way it's going to stabilize the region. And then, you know, China will be happy. They got Taiwan. And then there will be some negotiations over the West Philippine Sea if cooler heads prevail. But we ain't seeing cooler heads over in the Ukraine. Oh, Shit, I said it, now this video probably got banned. Anyhow, so I'm chopping up these onions. Grab dude's almost here, and once he figures out how to read a map, Grab, you need to, part of your orientation, you need about three days, not one day, not three hours. You need to give your drivers a three day block of instruction on how to read a map, because uh, in my experience, most folks here in the Philippines, they didn't grow up being taught how to read a map. And if you're not taught 
or have any experience reading a map, what makes you think they can get on a motorbike and try to look at a tiny screen and figure out where they're going? You need to give them three days of map training, navigation, before you turn them loose. It's just my opinion, but who am I? I don't know shit. I'm just a chef trying to make a delicious meal tonight for my crew. All right, so she's out there. I guess I guess the dude's on station. She's trying to get that grab order in here. But you know, the first thing she's going to say is she don't want the ground beef. Why you didn't get the ground pork? So you know what? I'll probably end up so I don't have to listen to her complain. I'll probably end up having to, uh, damn, there's a big old Filipino hair somewhere. Is he there, baby? Well, oh, he should be there now. You better go check him now. Just because he wasn't out there when you went out there don't mean to come in the house. Our doorbell's broken. So people sit there and ring that bell, it don't work. They think, what the hell is going on? These assholes aren't coming to the door, but the doorbell is broken. But my Filipina thinks, oh, I go out there, he's not there, so come back in and sit down and watch TV. Like, baby, you got to, you got to wait for the man. They're not gonna wait forever. Maybe I should check on him, see if he sent me a message. Oh my God, he's still Dude. Oh, now he's going the other way. There's no excuse for this grab. The man cannot read a map. They can't, they can't read maps. I'm, I'm up in the percentage. I will say 75% of the grab riders cannot read a map. This dude was so close, then turned around. Now he's like four blocks away now. He's guessing. It's not his fault. It's Grab's fault for failure to train their employees on the job that they're about to undertake. You know, I don't know if Grab's a, I have no idea what company Grab is. I don't know who owns it, but whoever does, y'all don't realize the frustration that your drivers are going through and that your customers are going through because you're not giving them proper uh, training on how to, how to navigate and then testing them on it. Trust me, the algorithm can be programmed where, you know, if, if every time a dude goes out on a run, he starts cutting racetracks near the target location, the computer can tell you that and flag the dude, maybe he's already in there, and say, hey, we need to call this, in, this guy in for some map training. Not that he's a bad dude, there's nothing wrong with him. It just means that he can't read a fucking map. He needs some training. That's it. I mean, come on. Ain't nobody gonna listen to me. I'm just complaining to the wind. <laughs> but if you move to the Philippines and you're lucky enough to be in an area where, you know, you got grab, you got grab food, grab mart. It's a service. It's awesome gotta be patient he'll make it here usually what they do they go up there they can't find a place because they can't read a map and then they ask the trike drivers and of course the trike drivers know where everybody lives and they'll tell them where to go so there you go learn some, something new about the Philippines every day we want to move to the Philippines eh Shit, come on over. The water's fine. Come on over. Just bring some patience and you'll be okay. Pack two big suitcases full of patience and a carry-on full of shut your mouth during times like these. You'll make it no problem. Don't worry about it. You'll be alright. I think that's a that's maybe all I need right there. A few of these snap beans here. Cost of living. But then like the cost to get them beans right there. They're not exact, but they're okay. They're okay, I'm not gonna complain. What'd you do with these beans? 
you just double them things up like right there. Now you don't got to, now you don't got to make too many cuts. See, let me show you again. Maybe I wasn't watching. Whoa, loud. See, you got a big long bean. Just fold it over like that and then chop it. Less, less cuts. Now what I just observed, I think, is that I got too much light. Either I got too much light or my white balance is off. This video is going to appear to be overexposed. Two riders. We have one more. So. Had two riders? Yeah. They couldn't get it on one? No. Well, there's <laughs> two riders. So I guess the dude... Look, there's one sack and there... If you can't get two sacks on there, I, I'm not feeling sorry for you fellas. But she said there's two riders, so at least they worked it out and they got it here. Uh, whatever, that's their problem. Who gonna get the tip? I, I don't know. I always put the tip on the app. But this is the Philippines, you never know. They might be out there hustling her for a tip because he had to bring two, two guys. Not my problem. I put the tip on the app. I tip healthy. He can square it away with his buddy later. I'm not saying that's what's happening, but a lot of times over here, that's what happens. <laughs> People that help you out, it'll be HBO. Help a brother out. But ain't nothing free. <laughs> ain't nothing free. <laughs> ain't no code of Pashtun Wally in the Philippines. What is going on? Damn, the bag looks like it got mauled by a bear. Lord have mercy. The damn meat is like exposed. What's going on here? Patience. <laughs> Ain't no grizzly bears over here. So I know a damn grizzly bear didn't maul that bag. Is that everything, baby? They got more though, man. They got more? Yeah, I ordered some eggs. I'm glad you deal with them. It's your country. I'm over here chopping beans. <laughs> She's all stressed out now. But this bag of meat, my God. Oh, Lord. Half the damn pork ribs are falling out. Oh, my gosh, these dudes. Patience. You want to come over here and live? Patience. Keep your mouth shut. If there's any buffoonery like this, I don't say buffoonery, but... Any stressful situations where you're gonna get pissed off, just let your wife handle it. Let your Filipino wife or girlfriend or the maid, let them handle it so you don't have to. Yeah. Where's the eggs, baby? I, I don't like it. I'm not right there. The eggs are missing in action? What happened to the, to the thing there? Hold that up for, hold that up and show the camera, baby. Just hold it up and show the camera. Hold it up, it looks like a damn bear mauled it. <laughs> Ain't no bears over here. Damn, here's a grab driver right here. See what he has to say. Hello? Hello? Let me go out there and see if the dude's out there. Hello? Let her figure it out. Let her work the problem. That's what I recommend. Because I don't want to go out there and work the problem. Because it ain't my problem. My problem is chopping these beans right here. <laughs> my, my problem is these beans. That's it. Oh, and the fact that... Mm, I got a little Force G in there on the couch. He's taking a nap. He just got too tired today. Maria's watching a movie. And the old lady is stressing out over the grab mark drivers. Oh, they tried to call me. So is that, check, do the inventory, baby, and make sure that the eggs are the only thing missing. I don't know what you're going to order, so you're the one who. If 
you look in the sack, there's what's called a receipt, baby. Oh, they don't have a receipt. They, they didn't bring a receipt. Just lay it out. Let me eyeball it. Folks, y'all see the stress I'm under here in the Philippines? I got meat hanging out of the package, ribs falling out, butter almost melting. Pissed off Filipina. She's really pissed because she didn't get to go to Apo Market today. But that's another story. This cold beer never broke my heart. Look at that. All the vegetables getting ready. The saga continues. She's so pissed off. She's so pissed off and frustrated. But hey, this this is kind of fucked up that all these packs of meat are busted. That's that's sort of unacceptable. You know what's not busted? What's not busted is that big old pack of ground beef right there. Look at that. How much is that? Uh, oh shit, 736 pesos, I think. But you know what? It's decided. We're gonna do pork ribs tomorrow, and tonight we're gonna, we're gonna do the ground beef fajitas. Is he out there? No. Yes or no? No. Damn. What we can do? All right, I'm cooking this tonight, so that that's tomorrow night. This right tonight. Y'all see the stress I'm under here, my friends? This dude keeps calling. Okay, he keeps calling, but then I try to answer and it hangs up. I don't know if you see that flame over there. I'm a one-man show, right? I don't have a film crew. I got this locked off on a tripod. Got the Lodge 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker. Folks, that piece of gear right there. Made in America by the good folks down in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, my friends. Shout out to everybody working at Lodge, working the grind, putting out a wonderful product made in America. Y'all are, y'all are the, one of the last holdouts to prove that we Americans can make the best shit in the world when we want to. <laughs> but we've lost that drive. We've lost that fucking, uh, that honor of having that title. Track my Grab Express delivery. Oh shit, there's another dude coming. So there's a dude coming on a Yamaha sniper. He can see me, I can see him. If that's the dude that keeps calling, it's on him to get here. Whatever, enough about that shit. Hey, you wanna know everyday life? All I can do is describe in real time what the hell's going on. Look at there. Big old thing of oil. I'm talking doomsday prepper here. I think I may have two of these. Nah, I just got one. Still a doomsday prepper. A little bit of oil in there, not too much. A little bit of oil to kick things off. Mmm. And if you move to the Philippines, do not buy the oil at the Sorry Sorry store. They'll, they'll put it in an old Coke bottle or uh, you know whatever they're gonna put it in, don't buy that oil. It's like, it's the cheapest oil that they can buy and then they repackage it in these little plastic bags. I mean, you can get a plastic bag full just for one shot. But don't, don't do it, that oil is so damn horrible. I mean, it's absolutely horrible. I don't, I, we don't, I don't allow her to buy that shit anymore. It's just like kerosene. That's worse than kerosene. It's like coming out of the old jeepney. So don't do it. It's cheap, yes, but it's like how much is your life worth? And it's worth more than, than the oil that you buy at a sorry, sorry store, I promise you. At least mine is. I ain't fucking using that shit no more. That stuff will totally ruin a meal. I'm telling you, it will totally ruin your meal. Get a little bit better quality oil. Do what you got to do. I'm gonna drop a ton of meat in here. <laughs> and I don't even know if it's gonna fit. But I've put so much stuff in the Lodge 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker before that I think I can get it in there. Listen to that sizzle, sizzle. 
Try to get a better angle on the dangle. I got too much stuff here blocking the view. What can I do? Let's fucking start this party off right. Cook the whole thing. And then I got breakfast in the morning. So it's always a big problem for me. She goes and buys this stuff up at the local place. Their fish or their whatever they want to eat. There ain't nothing for me to eat. The kids eat it. Why? Because they're growing up here. You know, Maria's eating all the local stuff, staying with her mother. So she already has those flavors locked in. You know, she'll eat sardines, all that. And then, uh, Fatima's been feeding a lot of this local stuff to Forest G. And so, I mean, it's good. They're half American, they're half Filipino, so they need to be able to eat food in their, their countries. But I'm not Filipino. And that's a big thing that, that guys coming over here, they forget. They forget that, they forget that they're American, or you forget that you're Australian or whatever. You think because you come over here and you live in your wife's country that you have to succumb and immerse yourself 100% uh, in, in their culture, and that's not the truth. Yes, you're living in their country, you have to respect local customs and laws, but it doesn't change the fact that you're not Filipino and you ain't never gonna be Filipino. You're an American. You spent 50 years in America, you're not gonna come over here for two years and become Filipino. It don't work like that. So, food is a big issue. Um, you know, and I don't wanna eat the, the fish in the morning. The, it's not for me. I'm, look, what, I'm an American, what am I looking for? I'm looking for scrambled eggs, some toast, some bacon. I can go get that at Puzzles. They go up to the local spot at the top of the neighborhood and get local food and they love it. But it ain't for me. And I'm telling you, don't be, don't be shy and don't think you're, you're, you're being rude if you don't wanna eat that, okay? That's not, that's not what you're used to eating. And so, uh, don't think you're offending nobody by, by not, not eating that, okay? Why? Because if you just moved here, I love you too, sweetie. I miss my mama bed. I know, sweetie. I miss your mama bed too. I don't know. Anyhow, I just thought I would throw that out there. Because you come over here, you're naive, you're new. Uh... And you think you have to be 100% to her culture? That's bullshit. It's 50-50. That's what I tell her. Hey, I'm living in your country temporarily. But when you break that threshold on that door, that's the kingdom, kingdom of Marcos. Okay? And it's more like America. The 70s, right? This is America in the 70s right here. It's called the kingdom of Marcos. When you walk out that door, yeah, you're back in the Philippines. 50-50. See how nice of a dude I am. Now folks, I got this lodge, uh, damn, filled up. But I got enough room for the vegetables. But first thing I'm gonna do is just doctor this with a little Worcestershire sauce. And I'm so blessed to have Worcestershire sauce because this is expensive. And if you come over here on a budget, oh Lord, you can't buy Worcestershire sauce too much. But, I got oyster sauce and I got fish sauce. Once I get the vegetables in there and get it a little bit later, I even got A1 sauce. I mean, I'm big balling right now. Thanks to y'all watching my videos and listening to my voice. I certainly appreciate it. The hot peppers, now they're not interested in. Uh, my Thai wife, you know, in Thailand, yeah, Thai folks, they love spicy stuff. My Thai wife, she likes spicy stuff. The Filipinas, they don't like spicy stuff in my opinion. If, if it is, it's a very mild, mild spice. It's not, they don't, they don't like hot stuff like, like Thais do. Totally different culture. Totally different flavors, totally different uh, opinions on food. But, you know, I live in Thailand a long time. That's my home. And my God, I love Thai food. That's why I'm in fighting shape when I'm over there, because all I eat is 
I say Thai food. I eat local food, right? I eat Thai food. I'm in Thailand. That's all I eat. I wouldn't want to eat anything else over there. I mean, occasionally, you know, get some American stuff. But every day, two, three, well, I don't eat three meals a day. Two meals a day, I'm eating Thai food over there. That's why I'm in such great shape. Over here, uh, you get chubby if you don't watch it. Just based on diet alone. Over here, I'm not eating Filipino food twice a day. I'm trying to eat uh, foreign guy food, American food. All right, so let that sizzle zizzle. Let it sizzle zizzle, that uh, ground beef. and Oh, that's some good looking beef. Good looking ground beef, really. I don't know if this came out of the States. I got it from S&R, so some of the stuff is imported. Uh, but the smell, the smell coming off of here, it smells like this is U.S. beef, imported beef. What's that, baby? Now the dude says it says he's on the way, baby. Scooby-Doo sniper. We'll see if that guy can read a map. Probably not. So patience. All kind of chaos going on in the world, but I am celebrating because tonight this ground beef is going to be delicious. Once I get done with it, Lord have mercy. And with cooking, what I like to do is just pour me a drink or drink my beer. Oh shit, speaking of beer, there's a there's some beers in this order. Oh my gosh, I was just thinking there was eggs coming. I forgot, I ordered some beer. I better keep closer tabs on this dude on that Yamaha Sniper. He's not on the Scooby-Doo Mio, he's on the Sniper. Order me four beers. But yeah, I love to uh, drink my beer, drink my liquor, and cook for my family. Listen to some good country music at night. You know what? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Went five months without drinking. Got some shit handle I needed to break. But uh, this is what I like to do every night. I ain't apologizing to nobody. Okay? Appreciate all the comments and all the stuff, but I don't subscribe to the AA mentality that once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. You know, recite the serenity prayer. That ain't for me. I don't subscribe to all that shit. Uh, please go ahead and feel free to psychoanalyze me and leave it in the comments. I love it. But I don't subscribe to that shit. You know, you take an organization, they, they come up with terms and terminology. Don't mean that it's right. Don't mean it's the gospel, so to speak. Ha! A little irony in that statement. But, uh, that's what I like to do. It's almost done. What I like to do, I, I always make sure that the meat is done before I go to doing anything else. It's like, step one, make sure that the meat is not going to make anybody sick. Put the heat to the meat and cook it until all the pathogens, the bacteria, the worms, whatever the hell may have found their way into that meat. Uh, especially here in the Philippines where refrigeration is not like it is in the West. So, yeah, uh, first step, I always cook my meat enough where I know that it ain't getting nobody sick. And then I start adding vegetables and and doing what I need to do to make it taste good. But step one is clear with me. You know, we harness fire a long time ago. And that's why we humans are still on the earth because we figured out how to harness fire, and cook food over the fire and kill all the nasty things that'll hurt us. So that's, that's uh, about 95% complete. So now I gotta come in here and see if I can get all these vegetables in here. Whoa, will it will it fit? Oh. Oh yeah, look at that mound of deliciousness. Yeah, it will fit. And there's no need to acquit. Look at that. In the large 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker. Y'all might think I'm crazy about what I'm about to do, but I'm going to cap it. The 
first I'm gonna put a little oyster sauce because now I can start prepping the flavors. Get that oyster sauce in there. Come on, get out of there. I'll be good to your mama. Let's do it. And that's about, I don't know, three, four, five teaspoons, somewhere in there. I'm always heavy on the oyster sauce. Now don't go heavy on the fish sauce or you'll ruin it. But it's okay to go heavy on the oyster sauce. Now look, to make sure it don't burn, I do add water. Now you might think, oh, what's he doing, blah, blah, blah. I don't want anything to burn. And I add a little bit of water. When I get done cooking in this cast iron, the cleanup is done. You dip everything out, you eat it, you wipe it out, it's done. But I do add just a little bit of water to keep it, uh, keep it from burning, keep it from sticking. Typically it don't, but I ensure that by just adding a little bit of water. And no, it don't turn to soup because I reduce it down, the flavors remain, and it will be some kind of delicious. All right, so you can't make this stuff up, right? Rider number two is doing the same shit. He's like two blocks over, cutting racetracks. He's going too far. So two out of two tonight. Can't read a fucking map, you know? Just over there wandering. And the streets that they're on, it's, it's like there's nothing over there. It's sort of dark, there's no street lights. Um, I have no idea why they go over there. The pin is not there, the directions aren't there, it's not the street. Um, I have no idea, but two out of two, wandering, wanderers. They'll eventually stop by the trike stand and ask, and they'll, oh, you go over there, how you? I'm fine, I don't give a shit, I've been cooking, but the old lady's out there in the street pissed off like a smashed cat. She ain't happy. Oh yeah, so we'll stir this up. Oh my goodness, folks. Let me use this RX100 here for just a second. This damn junk ass camera. See if we can get this thing to just go to work for a couple seconds and not do a thermal shutdown. There we go, right there. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that, that's beautiful, huh? That Worcestershire sauce is what made it. That Worcestershire sauce is what's what made it, and I need to hit it with a little bit more. You can't make this up, right? Now, it's only been a few minutes, but the dude is like three three streets over. He's probably knocking on somebody's gate. It <laughs> ain't got nothing to do. It ain't got nothing to do with us. All right, so now, now he's on our street. Now it looks like he stopped at the Sorry Sorry store. So he's up there now asking for directions, trying to figure out where to go. Can't make this shit up. Now he's, now he's on the way. Maybe. Now he's at the track stand asking them for directions. Oh Lord. What you wanna do is run up there. You wanna run up to the Sorry Sorry store and say, hey man, down here. But how's that helping anybody? It's not helping me. It's not helping the gentleman learn his job, figure out his own problems. You get it, baby? Did he show up? God damn, the bottom of that sack's about to fall out. At least he made it here. How about the eggs? Are they broken? They're okay? Is there some beer in there? Oh, yes, there is. Ah, I take back everything I said about the young man. He got here a little bit late, but he brought my four Leffy Blondes. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Thank you very much, my friend. Brought my chicken, chicken's still frozen. Let me give the gentleman a tip here. Now it's not coming up to give the guy a tip because it says something about Grab Express. I'm impressed that they figured it out. They had to get another motorbike I guess they're working on the algorithm due to all my complaints. But now I don't pop up to say, hey, give your rate the driver, or give him a tip. All right, so I'm coming in here, hitting it with a, with a little bit of salt, not too much. A little bit of salt. It's like one of these table food. There's a lot of stuff in there. So I put one spoonful, a little spoonful of salt. 
Not too much. You got salt in that oyster sauce, salt, you know. You already got salt in some of the ingredients. I've already got that great flavor. I don't think I'm gonna change the flavor with the fish sauce. I'll save that flavor for tomorrow night. Uh, it's steak night, it's fajita night. It's the way it's gotta be. Yeah, baby. When you cut them beers up, deploy one of them bad boys to, to the freezer. You know what? Change that up. Ch stay that order. Deploy two of them beers to the freezer immediately. Stack. Folks, we're coming up to the end of this little meal. Well, at least the main dish. Uh, the smell coming off of here. Now I hit it with a little bit of A1 as well. So the combination of A1, oyster sauce, and uh, Worcestershire sauce. Oh my gosh, it is smelling delicious in here. It's truly steak night. And so I'm, what I'm doing right now is just bubbling off a little bit of the excess water. Boy, this is expired already. This expired? Yeah, June 20th. June? Oh, I'll eat it, baby. Just. I got some cream cheese that ex that's expired, but that shit's expensive. Just go ahead and cut it up, baby. Cut up half of that thing, put on that plate. I'm gonna eat it. Doing wrong and start doing right. I could do that. If you just be good to my girlfriends. Oh, Lord. Baby. Never, never. As, if you just let all my ladies come over here, yep. all of them, then I'm why I got to go out. I don't think that's an unreasonable request. What? Baby, I want to be able to watch it, watch TV with all you ladies and cook for all you ladies. But as it is, I got to take my other ladies to the ABC Hotel and take them to the steakhouse. What I can do. They, they eating steak, you eating ground beef. Baby, listen. Ain't nothing wrong with that cream cheese. Listen, can you slice it into five rows? Baby, just slice that into five rows. Don't worry about love. You can't eat love, baby. Why don't you just slice it up? Oh, if, if I want to slice my own, what do I got a woman for? <laughs> okay, well, call him and tell him to come over. You don't want to. Hey, if you don't want to slice my cream cheese, I got women that will. They lining up. Bring Bring Baby, shh. I'm trying to make an award-winning YouTube video and you just sound like a cackling chicken. Oh Lord, and I just lost two peppers. I'm gonna put this in uh, on the see, that's the good thing about it. This is the top to the large three point two quart cast iron combo cooker. So all I do is pull this one off and just let it sizzle. I push push that over the flame and I'm about to be off to the races on cooking up my peppers baby can you hand me them two peppers in the floor those are big no they're big pieces get them come on that's just expensive so I just take a big old hunk of butter put the butter in the pot over there right thank you darling thank you You're so sweet Fatima you're sweet as you're sweet as vinegar. You are sweet as one of them sour sour patch kids. So I'm just putting a little butter, cayenne pepper. Just let the let the pot heat up. Yeah, that's a lot of butter, but I want it buttery. So we got that heated up, and then I just take my peppers. Oh Lord, lost one, lost two. We gotta recover that. Them things are too too delicious not to recover them. Come in here, recovery mode. Get the Gerber strong arm on. There we go. Did we save them? Oh yeah, we saved both of them. And I just I just sauteed these peppers in butter. Yeah, it's a lot of butter, but you know what? These peppers will be so darn delicious. I'm not making a creamy Diablo. I don't got that much in there. Oh yeah, this over here. You see, it's the perfect consistency. It's not too dry. 
It's not burnt. It's not like soup. Saute, saute. A little bit more cayenne pepper. Because I want some heat. I'll be shitting in the creek tonight, but that's all right. If you're just joining me on my channel, bottom right hand corner of your screen, somewhere right down there. Hit that overstay road sign. Get on board my train. I certainly appreciate it. If you subscribe, I will dance at your next wedding. Only thing I require is a first class round trip ticket to your location and back. I need uh, all expenses paid at the Conrad. And your bride's sister, I need her phone number. I'll dance at your next wedding. Pretty easy. Pretty good terms right there. How can you beat that? Now, folks, let me show you the finished product right here. Now, this is mine. Obviously, Maria and uh, Forrest G, Fatima, they're, they're not going to take the peppers or the cheese. They're not into that. But basically, I got the meat, cheese. I've got uh, the peppers with the butter, you know, the juice from leftover from cooking the peppers, basically butter. And then on top, I put a little A1. I'm going to tell you right now, that's about to be absolutely delicious. Now, folks, I want to say thanks for joining me on tonight's cooking show. Uh, certainly appreciate y'all joining me. Thanks to you watching my videos, listening to my voice, subscribing, leaving comments, and all that good stuff. You allow me to live this lifestyle. You allow me to uh, demonstrate my skills as a chef right here with the world on my cooking show, my travel show. And I certainly appreciate it. I'm going to drink my Leffy Blonde and then bite into this thing right here and just savor it.